From your PHLV Radio family, Merry Christmas and all the best in the coming year. Merry Christmas from your friends at PHLV Radio. It's a lunch hour in Vegas, and we're on the dot with Dot and Mia here on PHLV Radio. Hello world, hello Las Vegas, welcome to On The Dot, and this is Dot right here. And I'm Mia, and welcome to our fifth episode of On The Dot, where we give you casual answers to life's issues yes, through ooh. professional and tested uh, life coaching processes. That's right, Mia. And um, I was I was uh, looking at our old uh, videos, our old... Uh, is this a podcast or a webcast? What is this? An episode. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I realized that uh, I forgot to... I've been forgetting to tell our viewers what uh, coaching is all about. I mean, in, in, uh, in a wider sense, but... I guess since nobody's asking, really, <laughs> nobody's complaining. So coaching is simply um, partnering with you and f- uh, letting you know that the answers are within you. Yes, oh. the answers are within you. The answers are not really in the past or in the future in your problems, but you have the power within you to go forward, to move forward. And whatever is happening here, all the elements of this show, uh, the University of the Philippines Alumni Association of Nevada has nothing to do with this, except as uh, as our beneficiary and also as our partner in terms of public service. Now, by that we mean it's, it's a kind of a symbi- symbiotic relationship. Uh, Yupaan, uh, and we are the representative of Yupan. We give you the public service, and you find value. If you find value in what we're doing, you may also give us something. If you really want to do that, you may contribute. You may donate something to UP, because we also take part in several projects here in Las Vegas. So it's a giving and receiving kind of relationship. So that's what we're doing here with Mia. Yes. Yes, so uh, now that you mentioned that, uh, we received uh, different feedbacks from our listeners. Uh And uh, we did receive a lot of positive feedbacks. And if I could mention some of them, I won't mention names. But uh, we did receive uh, feedbacks, like uh, one of them were... uh, You are influencers, Dot and Mia. And then one said, reflections, food for thoughts, not only for business purposes, but for life in general. Mm -hmm. Cheers to Dorothy and Mia Martin Casino. Mm -hmm. And uh, one said, love the content. Okay. And then, I like your radio show yesterday. I watched this morning. You and Dot are amazing. You were so professional in your responses. Knowing you, that is the really way... That is really the way you operate, too. And then one said, um, I think he was referring to the previous episodes, too. Um, As in, as As within, within. so without. Yes, I read that one. Go ahead. As above, so below. You get what you give. You need the need then to step up. Mm. I think that was the take. Yes. So no with a yes to keep a good blend, not one-sided, no or imbalanced, life-giving environment to keep love and light, even in trying times. So those are the takes. Oh, that's the, good. Um, the who got. Yes. Yes. And um, we did receive one, um, I wouldn't say negative, but it was more of a challenge for us to be more spontaneous. To be more spontaneous. Yeah. So, you know, okay. we're yeah. still starting, so I guess that's... um. That's a challenge for us. We shall schedule our spontaneity. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, we're open to all all feedback. So Mm -hmm. please keep them coming. Thank you. Uh, Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. So um, yeah. What do we have today, Mia? So last week we were talking about influencers. Mm -hmm. But for today, uh, we're going to talk about um, reconnection and severance. So what is reconnection? Reconnection is, let me see, 
Reconnection means creating a relationship with someone again. Mm-hmm. And severance is the opposite, which <clears throat> is letting go or setting people free. Okay. Or cutting off the connection. Mm-hmm. Do we have a letter? Yes, yes. yes, yes the yes. letter sender wants to remain anonymous for, for today. So, reading the letter. Dear Dot, BFF, that's what we call each other. Me and my best friend. Mm-hmm. You know what BFF stands for? Uh, beef, fries, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what? You must be <laughs> hungry. <laughs> so, best friend forever. Best yes. friends forever. Yes. That's what it stands for. Best friends, yes. But the, f- but the forever part was cut short. Mm. I lost her recently to cancer. Three and a half decades of friendship filled with laughter, heartaches, career changes, marital and family issues. We knew all there is to know about each other. The distance kept us apart. Since I had to migrate abroad, we managed to keep the friendship strong. Thanks, thank heavens to technology. She was the sister I picked out by choice, as they say. Mm -hmm. This would be my first Christmas without her, and I can't imagine how it must be for the family she left behind. Mm -hmm. Her kids and husband, whom she fought for until the end. She fought a very good fight. Her love for them kept her alive and going. Eventually, her body could not keep up with her high spirits though and she gave in Mm. what makes me sad is the thought of not seeing her again when I come back home to the Philippines to visit not this Christmas not in the summer not ever again not anymore Mm. I dread the thought the feeling and I know it would never ever be the same again Though I know she's in a better place now, I can't help but still feel sad sometimes. How do I deal with this? I know she said I know we should set them free, move on and not hold them back. Thank you, and I wish all the best this holiday season and always. Love the other BFF. Thank you, other BFF, and thank you, Mia. That reminds me of <clears throat> uh just a couple of days ago, we said goodbye formally in a memorial for Jotinho, oh, yes, yes. our uh, treasurer day. and also a community leader. So this would be the first Christmas for so many people for so many without people, yes, their loved yeah. ones. You know, it's getting closer to home. Yeah. Reminds me also of your case, your yes. your friend. You, you lost your friend. So before we tackle the the letter let's bring in our guest yes our member highlight which i know very well <laughs> i know our member <laughs> our member highlight is a graduate from the university of the philippines in diliman mm-hmm. i wouldn't mention the year cuz i would be dating myself as well uh-huh. cuz i'm dating him <laughs> since yes. we were college freshmen he is i um personal banker at J.P. Morgan Chase, mm-hmm. and he is Mr. Timothy Cassinio. Hello, Mr. Timothy. And he is in Los Angeles now reconnecting with his mom mm-hmm. for his 90th, for her 90th birthday. Aha. Uh-huh. Welcome. Are you, are you hearing us right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here actually visiting dad also. And where is that? Uh, Hollywood Hills Cemetery. I think that's the official name. Okay, so so we're saying we're, our topic is about reconnecting and also saying goodbye. And in a way, you're reconnecting with your dad, right? Yeah, every time I'm here, okay. I, I, may, I make it a point to pass by. All right, all right. So when did your dad pass away? Uh, July 1st. Uh, 2016 like four years ago and your mom is with you right now 
Today's yeah, her she's, birthday. Yeah, uh, she's with him uh, lighting up candles. Oh, happy birthday to your mama. What's her name? Uh, Christina. Christina. And how do we call you? Timo or Timo? <laughs> Uh, Timo is fine. Timo, yeah. Doesn't matter. Thank you, Timo. So, you, do you? So you said you do this every year. Uh, every time I'm in LA, I visit my dad. I, I try to be here on my mom's birthday every year. Yes. Is that like a, <clears throat> like a, not really a ritual, but it's it, it's it's simply a tradition, right, or a way of uh, honoring her? She try. He tries to go every time he. All the chances mm. that he want, he, okay. he can, yeah. And so, or it could be an excuse. An excuse, woo, woo, woo. an excuse to visit the the other uh, what Hollywood right there. <laughs> yes. So, Timo, were you able to hear our our letter, the letter that was yes. sent to us? Yes. How, how do you, how do you relate to that? Can you relate to to that? You know, losing someone during this uh, the past year. Uh, we, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what what to say. How do I relate to it? Mm -hmm. um, other than me losing some uh, other some people myself. Um, I guess just hold on for those who's struggling and uh, mm -hmm. yes and and life goes on so life don't uh, on. that's right don't, don't dwell too much on it yeah. life goes on and you know uh, I guess that's it yes what struck me about your presence there right now with your with your mom who is 90 years old celebrating her birthday what strikes me is that you are strengthening whatever bond you have with people around you people close to you so <clears throat> in the case of our letter sender mia um do you have any uh per personal take on that uh can you relate with what she's feeling i guess uh she knows she knows that she has to move on mm -hmm. but she still feels sad yes so she knows what to do mm -hmm. but she 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 still feels sad so yes. she needs help <clears throat> like uh like our friends as well right. who have lost their loved ones we need to to move on right. but also i would like to remind our listeners and viewers and everyone mm -hmm. um who will return to this video some someday that the feeling of sadness, the, the depression, the, the grief is something we really need to dive into mm -hmm. at the moment of separation, the moment of loss or death. It's something that we should not uh, negate, should not uh, <clears throat> ignore. Right. Or cover up with, oh, you know, think positive, be 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 happy, you know, life moves on. Yes, life moves on, and we bring our grief along with that, mm -hmm. uh, because we need to to dive deep into that dark feeling before we can come up. So, if you're familiar with the five stages of grief, Dabda, mm -hmm. it's acronym that's Dabda. Uh, denial first. Oh no. No, not me, not her. It couldn't couldn't happen. It's it's impossible. That's denial. Then um, what's the next one? Uh, anger. Anger is uh, of course it's anger. How could you? How could this happen? This is this is preposterous. I'm against this, you know. And then B is bargaining. Oh dear God, if only you would give him back to me. If you only would heal this person, and then I'm I'm going to serve you for the rest of my life. You know, I'll be kind. I'll be nicer. Uh, I'm gonna fix our our relationship. And then D is um, depression. Mm -hmm. The depression, most of that, uh, can be. L the depression could could go on and on. It could be the longest part of the the grieving process. Oh, you know how that feels. We talked about that last week. And then the last one is uh, acceptance. Acceptance. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> for each individual, it's different. the The grief process is different. It comes in different forms. It shows up differently, and it takes different. Um, 
um, schedule, schedule time. or time frame. So. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So right now, so for our friend Timo, he is in Hollywood visiting the graveyard, gravesite of his dad. By this time, yeah. I am sure he's no longer in the grieving process. Are you still grieving, Timo? Uh, no, on the contrary, I'm glad it's over. Uh, he struggled the last years of his life. Was he sick? And uh, yeah, he was bedridden. He was. Uh, dementia couldn't be bedridden uh vegetable but but you know mm -hmm. breathing yes so we were just uh hoping it ends soon so did i grieve of course i grieve yes but, mm -hmm. but i'm also glad that it's over for him mm -hmm. so did your grieving process last for over a year or just a short while ah you know what it was short one it was uh so expected two it was wanted three he's been dying for what uh 35 years now mm -hmm. since he had a uh triple bypass we already accepted the fact that he'd be dying any day mm -hmm. oh again mm -hmm. that's 35 mm -hmm. years ago so everything was uh re prepared for ready we were ready i was ready yes um so it was just like okay time has come <clears throat> so in a way sickness is um i wouldn't say it's good but it's uh, it prepares us we have time to say goodbye you know long-term illnesses we have time to say goodbye and say prepare ourselves for for the worst part you know we strengthen our relationships i don't know if bff the other bff who's uh, who wrote this letter if she strengthened her relationship with her best friend before the passing on i i would assume she she if she had been in contact with her for 30 years uh yes three decades right three, three and a half mm. decades yes three and a half decades so in a way that's that's good some people say, "Oh, why do I have to have? Why do I have to be sick?" And and that you know, it's it's painful. It's time consuming. It's um, expensive, but it also gives us time to say goodbye. To prepare, yeah. Yes, time to say goodbye. Like my father, he went on coma for ten and a half years, and we had practiced dying. <laughs> That's what oh, my sister wow. said. Practice dying for ten and a half years. Huh. So the grieving process was within those 10 years like uh, Timo said he had been um <coughs> the overload oh, there's there's my mother-in-law oh yeah the celebrant the birthday celebrant hello happy birthday mama happy birthday oh she can't hear you can you oh. hear she can't hear you okay so hi, we, hi did we forget to say that Timo is the husband of Mia oh mm. I did I mentioned it <laughs> I, for, I did not hear that. Okay. Yes. Hello, Mama. It is such a blessing to be 90 it, years old. I know. And t today is her birthday. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Tomorrow she'll be 90 years old and one and day. day. <laughs> <laughs> and a day. So, yes, as I was saying, Mia, yeah, um, for others, uh, like last Thursday, the cyclists who were in yeah, an accident, accident here yeah. in somewhere in um, Searchlight, Nevada. I mean, do they did they prepare for that? No, that's difficult. It's, yeah. it's instant. And for those left behind, when do you say goodbye? Right. You say goodbye to spirit, not anymore to the physical body. Whereas if a person is sick, we can say goodbye right there. Hey. That's it's easier yes, to prepare. It's easier for the family. That's too. correct. So uh, here, I'm going to show this to the camera. I don't know if you can see that. Hmm, it's too far. Okay, but this is a list of the emotional scale. Mm. At the bottom is fear, fear, grief, depression, despair, and powerlessness. At the top is joy, along with knowledge, empowerment, freedom, love, and appreciation. Between fear and joy are 20 other emotions. So in the case of BFF, if I were to coach BFF, the other BFF, I would say, uh, look for your current thought right now. 
what is your current thought because see the the emotion comes from thought thought comes from belief belief comes from your innate knowledge so if she's feeling fearful angry or depressed right now or or feeling powerless because i'm not i won't see her again i won't see the body again so i would say what is the next best thought okay then go up a little higher and think about that and stay there for a while the the aim for you now is not to pull you out of your grief but to give you a little relief in that mm -hmm. grieving process, mm -hmm. just a little relief. So the question you posed was, how do I move on? I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of questions in a little bit. But I want to ask our, our guest, Timo, come back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to the don't go to the boulevard yet, Timo. Do your lunch afterwards. How did you get out of your grief? How did you start moving on and your mom and your family? Um what were your tricks? I don't, I, you know what? I, I didn't notice. So I I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know how I got out of it. I I just didn't notice. It's Mhm. Mm uh I was just watching it actually when it was uh happening i was just absorbing everything like watching his him but you know get get nailed his coffin i mean get nailed and then locked and then and then put down underground and dirt and all that so i was just watching it absorbing looking at everyone else uh and then it was done that's it <laughs> After that, it's like, all right, uh, time to change my schedule. I'm not going to come here every month anymore. You know, it's, oh. did, I, did I even grieve? I I don't know. You tell me. The, prob the, the grieving probably for men is different. You know, they are, men are more in, in control of their emotions. Women come unhinged very easily. We are, we are more in touch if, if you're to And I think that. also we were talking me and Timo, mm -hmm. uh, we were looking at Daddy, and he was smiling. Oh, Daddy was smiling. Yeah, Aww. it was like it was. He was mm -hmm. relieved <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. that he, on the coffin he was smiling. So I guess he was at peace when when he died. So it was easier for you to let go yeah. of that. To let go of that. So you said reconnecting. Our topic here is reconnecting, and then also letting go. The reconnection. We can keep doing that mm -hmm. even long after the person is gone. We reconnect like what uh, Timo is doing, reconnect uh, in spirit at the graveside. Or some people light candles, mm -hmm. some people offer flowers, some people continue the legacy left by the person who passed away. By I always tell people, if you're grieving for your loved one, you lost actually not really lost we just we're just losing sight mm -hmm. of the loved one he's not visible we don't feel him feel him or touch or or listen or see face to face or smell and whatever but we are still in touch in spirit so what i would tell them is um continue the the good works or the wishes of this person who who left for example if he or she is um what he loves uh, feeding the homeless for example continue that if he had a dream of building a house or or building an orphanage for example do that or be involved in that that's a way of honoring the other person yeah my realization that my my best friend died was I I there, there's always this instance where I send her a text every time I receive something, and the first realization that she was gone was when I received this message I'd forward it to her, and Ooh. yeah, mm -hmm. and when I received that message. I didn't have anybody to send it Aww. to anymore. So All that's right. the time I realized, yes. oh, she's yes. really gone. Mm -hmm. And so I was crying that day. Yes. So that was, when When did that happen for you, Mia? It was before my birthday. And so Which I canceled was, the birthday okay. party. <laughs> was it? Uh, yeah. So how did you get out of that? You got out of that. 
Yeah, and obviously. so everybody was telling me, no, push through with the part with your party. Your best friend knows you enough to say, uh, she knows you're gonna be sad if you don't have a birthday party. So okay. I went through yes, with it. Yes, yes. So that's why you can relate very well with it. Right? Yes. Uh, going back to the the emotional scale, like I was saying, what's happening? I can't see anything. Hmm? Are they driving somewhere? That's normal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're driving. Li because life goes on, Mia. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes, life goes on. Uh, so if the person, BFF, other BFF, if you're feeling, um, how, how, I don't know how you're feeling right now at this moment when you're listening to us, perhaps grieving still or perhaps uh, discouraged. If you're discouraged, you're in number 16 in my list here. Oh, by the way, this is from uh, Abraham and Esther Hicks, the emotional scale, the, the law of attraction. So if people say you should not be angry or you should not be be discouraged it's it's bad to feel discouraged and all that it's and then we ask where are you coming from where are you coming from so if the person is coming from uh feeling he's feeling discouraged right now he's coming from hatred and rage he's actually moving up in the scale so it's actually good. So that's why we don't judge people based on their feelings. If he's feeling, um, if he's blaming someone for the death, I'm blaming COVID for the death of our friend Joe. Mm -hmm. But where am I coming from in that state of blame? I'm coming from powerlessness down here, all the way from number 22. Blame is number 15, so I'm actually going up. However, if you are in a state of, let's say, hopefulness yesterday, and then today you're feeling uh, in a state of blame, blaming someone, you're going down. Hopefulness is number six. Blame is number 15. You're going down. That is uh, the, the negative side of it, the, the negativity, the, the, you know, the, in the plus minus, it's going down, negative. actually. Yes. But coming from depression that's positive that's moving up that's why we don't just judge people for how they feel right now the question of where are you coming from is very essential and then the next question is where are you going to <laughs> where are you heading to what's your direction now and that moves us to the the process here so for example if you're feeling unhappy um Timo are you feeling unhappy how are you feeling right now Relaxed. I'm on vacation. <laughs> Beautiful. Do you want to go higher? Do you want to feel what? What could be better than relax? Relaxation is. is Do I want to be a uh, be high? <laughs> so yeah. high. I'm not asking you to go on drugs, darling. <laughs> It said higher. <laughs> higher, yes. Higher in your feeling. So relax, relaxation would be just uh, contentment, right? Are you feeling contented? Yeah, this is good. This uh, is good. Yeah, I'm good with this. Yes. If you want to go, let's say, joyful or empowered or completely in freedom and passion, you will have to be changing your thoughts. Uh, getting higher and higher you have the power we all have the power to change our thoughts right so for example Mia I'm, not, I'm going to leave you alone for a while <laughs> Timo, because I don't want no, you don't to be, leave him alone <laughs> I want you to be engaged in passion right now you're, you're with mom you know <laughs> Oh, what, you want me to go? No, 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 don't go. <laughs> don't He's go. sunburned already. <laughs> Stay with us. Stay That's with fine us. with me. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay, so if you really want to go, I will let you go. But before that, before that, Timo, um, oh, I'm just talking to Mia that if, uh, if she wants to elevate, for example, her feelings, if she's still feeling sad with her friend, so the next thing, the process would be, what is the next best thought? Right, so can you give me a statement, Mia, and how you're feeling about your best friend? Right now? Mm-hmm. Um, um, I know she's in a good place. Mm -hmm. uh, I worry about her family. Okay, so I worry about her family. Does the statement make you feel 
happy, empowered, or good? How does the statement make you feel? Mm. Worried. Worried. <laughs> <laughs> Worried about the brown, yes. <laughs> Worried. So, what could be... Can you make another statement that's higher than that? You know, that's more relieving than, I worry about her family. Tell me about her family. I know they're strong. Yes. Yeah, so, I worry about their family. Hmm. That's a, that's a degree lower. And then you say, but I know they're strong. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel now? Better. As, so, yes. So, the process is called, which thought feels better mm -hmm. okay it's interesting because the thought makes us feel if we think of something we feel something about that so then so now you said you're saying that her family is um what did you say what was the word that you said about her family they're they're strong they're strong yeah. okay can you go higher what's what could be the next better sounding thought better feeling thought they're resilient. They are resilient. Does that lessen your worry? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is how we do it, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We reach for the better feeling thoughts. That is the name of the process that we're doing here. Reach for the better feeling thought. And today, so we, we're not going to prolong this uh, session today. <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's uh, how long have we been here? Like over 30 minutes, almost 30 minutes. Um, for us, reconnecting for Timo, for example, reconnecting with his mama and mama, mommy, reconnecting with Timo at the same time, you have a relationship going there. What you're doing actually is um, making memories. You're making good memories. And in the event that separation happens, that the letting go happens, because eventually we'll let go of things and people and events, then it won't be filled with regrets. Mm. And what's interesting, extra interesting, Mia, is yesterday was new moon. The new moon for people who are engaged in um, astrology, astronomy, uh, energy, healing, and all that. The new moon is the time to create something new. Oh. The full moon is the time to release. So see, even life itself is involved in reconnecting, creating, letting go, creating, letting go. So life and death, just like that. Uh, so for the BFF, the, 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 the other, other BFF, and for those of us who are BFFs left behind, Let's just, uh, I would say that one way to reach for the better feeling thought is to engage ourselves in activities that we really love and uh, continue the legacy that our dearly beloved has left behind. Be kinder, be more loving, be what else, you know, be the best that you can. But never suppress your emotions. The emotions are indicators of the thought. Okay, so feelings of revenge come from a thought. So go use the emotions to look into the thoughts and then change the thought. Be empowered enough. Know that you have the power to change your thoughts so you can change your feelings. You have the power for that. So Timo, going back to you because I don't want to be wasting your time there, your precious time with your mama. Oh, you're good. You're, I'm good. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what What do you intend to do now with your during your vacation with your mama? What do you usually do to reconnect? Uh, after this, it's lunchtime, and it's uh, her favorite Thai place again, and the same food and whatnot. So whatever she wants, we'll we'll have for lunch. So that's the next step. After that, I don't know. Do you, uh, such a vacation. Do you do you really enjoy doing this with with your mama every day? I mean, every day, every year. I mean, you you seem to have a very great relationship, a great relationship with your mom. Uh yeah, I I I think so too. I hope everybody has. Yes. Um, but yeah, we're she likes it when I'm here, and uh, I I come here as often as I can. 
I like it that you're reconnecting, that you're taking the the extra, uh, going the extra mile, literally hmm. going the yeah. extra mile, going to see mama. And I would encourage men to do that. It isn't just your mama, or probably your papa, your 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 sisters, your siblings. What's your message for people who are listening right now, Timo? In terms of um, showing love for family members and uh, observing ceremonies and rituals. Huh? I, that's a broad question, but let me let me just say something to that uh, letter writer. Okay. Oh, that's good. Of your show today. Mm-hmm. Um. That she may she may be like you know dead I guess, but uh, she, she doesn't have to be gone. So uh, I'll use my dad as an example since we talked about him. I still talk to the guy. Mm-hmm. He he still guides me, and and it's every day. So not just now because I'm here. No, it's like if I see something happening, let's say with my daughter. Then, then my dad usually participates in the thinking. Anyway, so I, I recommend you do the same with your, I mean, with her friend who is physically not there, but can be there. That's up to us, though. Yes. Oh my God, that's so precious. That's nice. That is so precious, uh, Timo. Coming, especially coming from a man. Mm-hmm. You know, I hear these things coming from women, but for men to say to say that, and for a Filipino man to say that, to continue connecting with with the person, he may be dead, but he's not gone. That's precious. Thank you so much. I love that. Good oh, job, you pops. I love that. Good job, pops. Oh, <laughs> hmm. oh, Mia, you're so. You must be so proud. Yes, yes. So, uh, what, what, what about you, Mia? What's your? What would be your message for the the other BFF? Hang in there. Hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> Life like goes on. on. Life yeah. goes on. Yes. Uh, so yes. Um, I guess that's it for today for our On The Dot. By the way, the dot is not just the name of this person talking, but the dot is also a symbol of the here and now. Mm. The dot is the here and now. And so I hope that you got something from our little talk today from our friend Timo. He's uh, from the University of the Philippines Alumni Association in Nevada, broadcasting from Hollywood. (laughs) Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for being here. Thank you, PHLV Radio, for for this uh, time and space. And thank you, Mia. Thank Thank you. you. Yes, thank you, everybody. And um, do you have a parting quote, Mia? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, The quote for the day is also anonymous, and it is... Friends, keep them less, but the best. Oh, friends, <laughs> keep them less, but the best. Yes. Okay. And again, we'll mm-hmm. see you on Wednesday, yeah. every Wednesday, 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, mm-hmm. on the dot. On the dot. Merry Christmas in advance, everybody. Oh, Happy birthday, so Mama. Much. Happy birthday to, to all those who are celebrating. Mm-hmm.